I'm so excited to show you how I made this. This is one of the costumes that when I was a kid, I saw on TV and I was like, I want that. I want that so bad. I wanted it so bad, I would draw myself in this costume for years and years and years and years until now when I actually made the costume and now it's mine. It's one of my favorite things I've ever created. The hat is like perfect. The coat is great. The little under puffy skirt makes it just like chef's kiss. And the making process wasn't too bad, although it was a little precarious at times and I had some technical difficulties. I don't wanna keep you waiting much longer. In this house we craft in pajamas, let's get to it. Starting with the short poofy petticoat and man, we are gonna need some supplies. I cut a long skinny, but not too skinny rectangle for the waistband slash bottom part of the waistband, part of the skirt, yes folded it in half, stitched it together so it became a circle, a round, if you will. The fabric I am using is a thrifted cotton bedsheet, and let me just tell you right up, it is doing the job. Uh, once I stitch the round, I stitch in a casing and then insert some elastic into that casing so that it's got a little bit of a stretchy waistband. And once all of that is done, you start the arduous process of stitching on all of this tool. This takes absolutely forever, so put on a podcast, settle in, do some stretches, and just, just keep going. Don't give up, just keep going. This is the first layer of tool, and then here we go, sewing the second layer, trying to bunch it up as we go. There it is all together, the second layer. That's two layers of tool. And this is the finished product, four layers. Believe it or not, today was my very first time using a camera slash recording device and uh, every time I thought I was recording, I definitely was not recording. And so I have zero footage of me making the top except for like a couple pieces of the very, very end. So this is the pattern that I used, just the top part here that you can see is circled in yellow. And then this is the sleeve that I used for the sleeve. I cut one out of my outside velvet red material and then one out of my inside lining material and that's the top part of the skirt. Um, again, this was my first time obviously using technology ever. In fact, I was born yesterday so um, <laughs> I just made a huge mistake and I don't have any footage of it. Sorry! But I do have a lot of footage of me slowly basting the outside fabric to the inside fabric. And this is literally the last step of the project. It's all I got. Uh, the part that I've kind of been dreading is, is here. And I better go get my vacuum because the cutting fluffy fabric. This is, this is bad. The velvet is bad. It leaves little like fluffy things everywhere. This is so much worse. This is a monstrosity. There's just, there's no getting around it. It's, it's gonna be pretty ugly. Using some scrap fabric and always looking at my reference photo, I cut a kind of pattern for how I want the furry lapels to look on the jacket. And then it was time to start cutting into this beast. Definitely keep a vacuum handy because as soon as you cut into this stuff, it just fluffs everywhere. And normally I would just cut the back of it with a razor so that I don't cut through the actual fluff, but this is like stretchy fluff and that just didn't work. So this is the best I can do with it. And here we go with a vacuum. I ended up with two kind of crescent moon shaped furry thingies and I laid them out and then put them right sides together, pinned the whole thing together, used ample pins. I did not want this stuff slipping and sliding anywhere while I was sewing it. And then I worked very slowly and very carefully to make sure I was getting both layers of the fur and not catching any of like the loose thingies, like loops of fabric onto the presser foot. Then it's time to flippy flip it inside out and try it on to see if it even worked. And honestly, I think it did. I do like the way it's working so far, or looking, looking so far. I was absolutely covered in little fluffy bits after this. So I tried to vacuum myself off as best as I could, but it is futile, so I continued to work. I cut two more rectangles and folded them in half. These will become the sleeve cuffs. And I hand stitched them onto the end of the sleeve. I couldn't use a machine for this because my machine just couldn't quite get into that small space very well, so a hand stitch it is. 
and it's looking really good. Uh, I would be more apologetic about losing all of the footage for even building the skirt, but it's just a circle, uh, so I don't feel too bad about that. Uh, sorry, sorry, but I don't feel bad about it. Here I am trimming up the hem. And then I decided to put some horsehair braid into the hem of the skirt. This just kind of helps it be more voluminous and have more of a bounce. And because I'm going to be putting white fur trim all around the bottom part of the skirt, I'm just sewing the horsehair trim straight onto the top and I'm not flipping it underneath to make it look nice. It's gonna get covered up anyways. To make the trim that goes on the bottom part of the skirt, I cut the longest, most shaggy rectangle of my entire life and sewed all the little pieces together, marked exactly the right height that I wanted it to be in comparison to the bottom of the hem, and got to work stitching all of that on. Making sure to go slow again because there are little loops of fabric that can get caught on the presser foot forks and that can halt your progress, so be careful. Then I turned the trim up, pinned it and hand stitched it so that it was like nice and even all the way around the bottom of the trim. This is the inside part of the skirt. And I chose to hand stitch this all down because I did not want there to be a hem on the outside part of the skirt. Moving on to the hat, I measured the circumference of my head. I cut out two reasonably sized triangles and stitched them together. Remember to pin because velvet is very slippery and if you're gonna sew over your pins, go slow and be very, very careful because your needle will just chonk right into your pin and it'll make the worst noise and ruin your machine. Then it's time to try on your new gnome hat and it stands straight up. Adding more fur trim, that's like this whole costume honestly, is just add trim, add trim, add trim. If you're like wondering what should I do, just add trim and you'll be good to go. The final part of the hat is to just add the little bobble part to the end of the hat. I used quilt batting to achieve this effect. I did wrap some thread around it just to keep it all together. And then I wrapped the fur around it and stitched it all in place. This project is not done until I have vacuumed every piece of fluffy fuzz I find in my sewing studio, on my clothing, in my house, just everywhere. I vacuumed for, for hours to get it all gone. Two minutes into this shoot and my shoes have already poked through the socks that I put on top of them. It's like little little toes poking through the edges. So ugly. I don't think I could be happier with the results. I am going to keep this costume probably for the rest of my life. I will be a small grandma. Well, not so small. I'm a very tall individual. I will be a tall grandma wearing this outfit around Christmas time, making cookies, decorating Christmas trees, the whole shebang. I am obsessed. I wanted to cover a few things before I let you go, but these are the shoes that I wore for the shoot. They're just a regular pointed toe high heel, but they're not very tall. And this is a sock. I just cut a little hole out for this. There was another creator that did this exact thing and I will put them here as well as in the link in the bio. But I just had a rectangle of fabric and I safety pinned it around the top of the boot. Boot, that is a loose term. This is a sock and a shoe. And that's pretty much all I did. For the tights I did red fishnets and a pair of leggings that matches my skin tone relatively. I got them off of Amazon like four years ago and they've been great for a lot of costumes. I did not make the gloves. I tried to make the gloves out of the same material that this is made out of, but it's not stretchy. And so when I tried to fit my hand inside, it was like not going to work. So I got these off of Amazon as well. What else? The makeup. Makeup is pretty much like what I would normally do, just way more drama. So a dramatic red lip. I have like these little, instead of like a cat eye, it's like Martha May has these eyeliner things that just kind of like come off of her eye. And then the nose, I've just contoured my nose to look like a little tiny who knows. In reality, I just, it's my normal nose. I didn't tape it back or anything. I don't even know how to do that. The fact that we got this, out of the whole deal amazes me and I'm here for it. I feel like the moment 
And I think that's what Martha May would want for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. More videos are on their way soon. I've got more Christmas content coming very quickly. And in this house, we craft in pajamas. Let's get on this thing. Ready? Yep. Oh, it's a light farther than I thought it was going to be. Oh. <laughs>